Hello everyone, this is me Arijit with a new video in our series building a drone from scratch and in this video we are going to talk about ESCs. Now at the first we will talk about like uh, different type of ESCs like and how they are different from each other like different protocols, different firmwares and things like that and then we will talk about when you are buying an ESC for your drone uh, what are the things you should consider. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is what a ESC is. Now, ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller. Now, it is uh, now in a drone, it is used to control the uh, speed of the drone motors. Now, if you don't know how a drone motor or a brushless, mo brushless motor work, you can watch my previous video. In that video, I have discussed about how a brushless motor works and like uh, how you can, when you are buying a motor for your drone, what are the things you should consider. And in this video, we are talking about ESCs, which are basically control those motors. Now, in an ESC, like ESC uh, consists of many things. For example, ESC has its own microcontroller. It has more, it, inside it, there are MOSFETs, there are gate drivers, there are uh, voltage regulators and things like that. So we are not talking about too much uh, about the, how the internal structure looks like, uh, but we are talk, we are, here we will mainly talk about like, what are the things you should consider while buying an ESC for you. Now the first thing you should like you should consider is uh, the current, the current rating of the uh, of your ESC. For example, if you see here, I have one ESC here, and if you see here, it is written uh, Simong 30 amp 28. That means a 30 ampere ESC. Now how you will know like what ampere uh, ESC you should buy now it depends on the motor you are using now if you are using uh, a motor of let's say 20 ampere in that case you should buy uh, ESC of around 30 ampere so it uh, you should never buy let's say you are you have a 20 ampere motor so you should never buy a 20 ampere ESC in this way it will not work okay so whenever so your the current rating of your ESC should be always greater than the current rating of your motor okay so, uh, like I said, if you have a 20 ampere motor, you can just go for a 30 ampere ESC. And here, uh, I have a 30 ampere ESC here. So this is the first thing you should consider the current rating. The second thing is uh, you have to see like which battery you are using. For example, if you see in this uh, ESC, it is written uh, LiPo 2 to 4S. That means it will support LiPo 2S to 4S battery. Okay. Now we haven't talked about batteries yet. We'll talk about them. But 2S to 4S basically means that 2 cell LiPo battery to 4 cell LiPo battery. Okay. Now, for example, if you have a 5 cell LiPo battery, this ESC is not going to work with that. Okay. So when you are uh, buying the ESC, you have to also think about the battery you are using. Or maybe you can buy the ESC first and based on that, you can go for the battery. This is the second thing you should consider. Now, the third thing is now the firmware of the ESC. So nowadays we use two different types of firmware in ESC. So one is Simonk ESC and another is BL Heli ESC. Okay. Now Simonk is a little bit older, whereas BL Heli is comparatively newer. Uh, but the thing is that with both of the ESCs, your drone will be uh, stable. So there will be no difference in the stability, but there are differences in like the like features. So for example, like uh, as the Simon is kind of older one here, you will not get a lot of options. Whereas BL Heli, with BL Heli, you can actually connect the BL Heli with your computer and you can change the settings. So for example, uh, you can change the motor direction, you can change the response times and a lot of things. So you will have a lot of settings you can configure in BL Heli, whereas in Simon you cannot. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you cannot go with Simon. Here I am using a Simon QC. So if you see here, it is clearly written here, Simon R30 amp QC I am using. Now you can definitely go for Simon ESC, uh, but uh, because uh, like Simon ESC is a little bit cheap, whereas uh, BLE is a little bit expensive. But uh, like like I said, the stability is almost same. But if you need like if you, if you want to configure a lot of settings, in that case you can go for BLE. And the thing is. Uh, when you are buying the ESCs, they most of them comes with their bootloader. So even if you buy a Simon QSC, you can actually uh, install a, a BL Heli firmware on that. In the same way, if you have a BL Heli, a BL Heli ESC you just bought, you can actually install a, a Simon firmware on that. So you can just install that. Okay, but for the beginners, I really don't recommend that. So you can simply buy one of these ESCs, either Simon or BL, and you can use that. Okay, up to you which one you want to buy. 
Uh, also, if you talk about the BLLE, there are different versions of BLLE. There is BLLE uh, S, there is BLLE 32. Now, BLLE uh, S is for BZB, whereas BLLE 32 is for 32-bit, uh, it's a 32-bit uh, ESC. Okay. Now, I'm not talking too much uh, in detail about these things, okay, in about the firmware. So, okay, maybe we'll make another video on that. Uh, but the basic thing is you can go for any of this because the stability is almost same, but you are just going to get some uh, more features in the VLD one, okay. Now, after this, you need to consider the protocol. Now, the protocol is basically there are uh, several types of protocol in ESCs. So, there are standard PWM, then there is one shot, there is D shot, there is multi shot, and pro shot, and uh, things like this. Okay. Now, what this thing is and what the protocol basically means. Now, pro with the protocol, what really changes is like uh, uh, basically the differences between these all protocols are mainly the response time. So, for example, and also sometimes the stability. So, for example, uh, let's say you want to build a drone, which is very like uh, the response type is very response time is very quick. Now, what uh, what is the response time is uh, basically? Let's say you are flying your drone with a speed of eighty percent, okay, and then suddenly you want just want to drop it to twenty percent. Now, to drop this eighty percent, twenty percent, your ESC needs some time, some interval. Now, when you have a quick response uh, time, the, this interval will be very less, okay. So, uh, let's say you will see like there are some drones, they come like this and go like this, okay. So, they have a very good response rate. So, if you are building a, uh, building a FPV drone, you need to buy ESCs with a very good, uh, very quick response uh, time, okay. Now, with uh, comparatively to standard PWMs, the one shot has a, uh, has a quick response rate. Also, they are quite light and multi shot has a better response rate than one shot okay and then there is this d shot now uh, before going to d shot one thing you have to know is all these escs you need to calibrate with the uh, with your transmitter so we basically uh, calibrate the throttle of the uh, esc with the throttle of our uh, transmitter now if you don't know throttle and things like that we'll discuss about that and i will show you how you can calibrate this but the thing is that you need to calibrate your escs when you are building the drone uh, or for all these ESCs, but for D shot ESCs, you don't need to calibrate it because all these ESCs, uh, one shot, D sh uh, one shot, uh, multi shot, and this the standard PWM, they works on analog signal, whereas D shot works on digital signal, so it's one and zero. So whenever you are working on values like one and zero, there is no need of calibration. So with D shot ESCs, there is no need of calibration. Okay. And there is, and then finally, there is the pro shot ESC, uh, which is basically you can say the combination of like uh, combination of digital and analog. Okay, so this kind, of, but the the thing is that if you are going to buy the D shot or pro shot, they are really advanced. But the problem is, uh, all flight controllers doesn't support them. So you have to whenever you are buying those uh, ESCs, you need to see if your all the other hardware really support them or not. Okay, for a beginner, you can simply go for the standard PWM ones, or you can simply go for one shot, maybe, or maybe one shot, multi shot. Okay, you can go for them, uh, but you should remember that the one shot and multi shot, the price also increases. Okay, but the thing is that you can go for them, or if you want to build a drone with a quick response time. Now, this is about the protocols. Now, these are the things you need to consider while buying your DEC. So, let's just recap everything. So, at first, you should see the current rating, okay, which should be greater than your motor. Then you should the battery. So, which kind of battery you are using, like 2S, if you are using a 3S battery, you should see that if your ESC supports that or not. Then you should see the protocol you should use. Uh, not, uh, so, you should see the firmware you are using. So, uh, here you can go for any of them, Simonk or VHELI, depending on your budget. And if you want to set advanced settings, go for VHELI. Then you have these protocols, like uh, if you need a quick response time, go for one shot, multi shot or D shot. If you even have a better budget, you can go for them. Else, you can go for standard uh, PWM ones also. The stability will not uh, like uh, differ so much. Okay. And, and finally, let's just talk about the things. Okay. Another thing I need to talk about is we talked about different ESCs, but we haven't talked about how you can actually uh, connect these ESCs with your motor. Okay. Now we'll talk about how you can connect the ESCs with the motor and how they basically work. So, if you see here now, if you see this ESC, uh, here we have three uh, uh, wires in this side and in the, this brushless motor also we have three wires. Now, in the last video we have talked about like this three wires basically represent three different phases. So, you can simply connect these three wires with these three, uh, uh, these three wires randomly and then if you see that if mo your motor is not rotating in the correct direction, you just swap any of the two connections and then it will work just fine. Okay. Now, another thing is you see here, this, these connectors are basically called bullet connectors. And uh, as you can see in this ESC, the connectors are already soldered, but 
if you see this ESC here it doesn't have this connectors connected okay so you can you can just uh, buy any of them so if you are buying this kind of ESCs in that case you need to uh, attach this uh, bullet connectors yourself okay and if you are buying this kind of ESCs then you will get them pre-installed okay and in the other side if you see there are two connectors here there is like two uh, wires one is red one and one is uh, a black one so basically the red one is for the positive and the black one is for the negative and now you can connect these two things with the battery or the power distribution board okay and the thing is that here if you see this is this wire now in this way there are three wires one is the white one is the uh, red one is the uh, black now the white one is we connect with the flight controller so that our flight controller can control this esc now coming to the black and the uh, black and the red they are basically called bc which stands for battery eliminating circuit so whenever you are applying this the voltage so let's say if you are applying 12 voltage here to control the motor automatically here in this uh, in this red wire and uh, black wire you are going to get five volts using that five volts you can actually power your uh, flight controller okay now uh, if maybe there are some flight controllers like kk2 where you can simply power those flight controllers with this uh, battery eliminator circuit you don't need to power them separately and uh, there are flight controllers like pixock where you need external power supply okay so these are called BEC and you can also buy a flight controller without BEC those uh, sorry uh, ESC without BEC and those ESCs are called opto ESC so you can also buy them but again like uh, having these things doesn't hurt so you can simply buy one of these so this is how you can connect a ESC with your motor now here as you can see we have two ESCs now both of them are, are 30 ampere uh, Simonk ESC and both of them support 2S to 4S but this thing is uh, way expensive than this one this, because this is a local one and this is a branded one now i think the uh, here the brand is ready to sky and this is a local one like i said so when you are buying your esc i recommend you to buy these branded escs rather than these local ones because these local ones doesn't last for long and uh, they heat a lot and there are many problems but you can you, if you have a low budget you can buy them uh, but I really recommend you buying this standard ESCs like standard branded ESCs because they work really good. Okay, okay. so this is uh, all about you need to know about ESCs and I think you have understood how uh, ESC works and uh, what are the things you need to consider while buying a ESC. So if you have any other questions, you can post them in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that so that you will get the future updates whenever I will make a new video on this series. And so that's it about all. Uh, that's all about this video, guys. And see you in the next one.